Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'll take a look at how to make a push sliding bar with the Avada Off Canvas Builder. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. OK, let's begin. The Avada Off Canvas Builder allows you to create a variety of pop-ups and sliding bars in Avada. If you're unfamiliar with it, check out our How to Use the Avada Off Canvas Builder documentation, linked below. I've imported the Avada Music pre-built site here, and as we can see currently, there is a flyout menu activated from this menu icon. Instead, I'm going to use the Off Canvas Builder to create a new push sliding bar for this site that's going to look like this. I'll get started by heading to the Off Canvas page. On the back end, you can access this from the sidebar menu or the Avada dashboard menu. From the front end, as here, you can access it from the Off Canvas link in the Avada menu. I'll just control click that to open it in a new tab. I'll give my new Off Canvas a name, I will just call it Push Menu, and then I can click on Create New Off Canvas or just hit the Enter key. OK, so now I'm ready to start building. If I click on Avada Studio, there are nine sliding bars here I could use as a starting point for the design, and a couple that are already set up as push sliding bars. But for this video, I will build one from scratch. So I'll cancel out of this and add a new 1-1 one -one container and column. In the Off Canvas options, I will head straight to the General tab, and here we can see that Pop-Up is the default Off Canvas type. Let's change that to Sliding Bar. This adds a few more options, and the first of these is Default State. I'm going to leave this on Closed. For the next option, for this example I'll set the position to the right but this can also be left, top, or bottom. Everything except the bottom position can be set as a push sliding bar. And so for the transition, I'll set that to push. That's what makes it a push sliding bar in that it pushes the page content across when it opens. With the next option, width, note that there is a responsive icon here, and this means you can set different widths for different screen sizes. For this example, I think I will set a width of 420 pixels. I'll leave medium alone so it will inherit the width from large screens, but I'm going to go to small screens and set the width there to 100%. So in this way you can have completely different widths on different screen sizes. I'll leave the options for content layout and content alignment at their defaults, and I don't need any CSS class or CSS ID settings, so let's move to the next tab, Design. The only change I will make here is to set the background color to color 8, and this will mostly be just a visual aid as I design, as I'm going to add a background color and image later on. But for reasons I'll explain later, I'll add these to the sliding bar container instead of here. OK, let's move on to the next tab, Overlay. Again, the defaults are pretty much what I want, but you can disable this completely or customize what it looks like and how it behaves. So let's move to the Close Button tab. All I will do here is set everything to No. In my example, the sliding bar will be toggled from the menu element in the header layout. Animation is the next tab, and this already has entrance and exit animation set up as defaults for a sliding bar. I'm happy with this, so let's head to the next tab, and that's conditions. Again, because I'm triggering this manually from an icon in the header, I don't actually need to turn this on. For the same reason, I don't need to set any triggers on the next tab, as my trigger is set elsewhere. See the Off Canvas video playlist for more information on triggers and conditions. The next tab, Rules, gives you a lot of advanced flexibility with your Off Canvas. These are very powerful and can be used in many ways. But for my example, I don't need any of these. I don't need any custom CSS either, so now it's time to make the sliding bar content. For my example, I'm going to make a main menu sliding bar, but the content can of course be whatever you want, same as the triggering method. So apart from the content, you already have all you need to know to make a push sliding bar. But if you want to see an example of a cool push sliding bar, keep watching. Now the site has a sticky header here, and that's getting in the way of my container controls. But I can just scroll down a bit until the sticky header engages, and then the container controls are accessible. You can also just go to the navigator and edit the container from there. OK, let's start by checking the container options here. Now a sliding bar is full height automatically, but I also want the content to be full height as well, so I'm going to set this container to be full height here. And I'm going to set the row alignment to space between. I'm doing this to separate my content evenly, but that will become more obvious once I add it all in. 
I'll also just go into the Design tab and set the left and right padding here to 0 pixels, as I want one of the columns to go full width here. Now I'll head to the Background tab. On the Color tab, I'll set the color to color 8, and set an alpha adjustment of minus 50 to make it half transparent. Now I will head to the Image tab, and set a background image. I thought I'd do something a bit fancy here and set the featured image as the background of this sliding bar. So I will go into Dynamic Content and select the Page Featured Image, and leave it on the Main Featured Image. I'll leave the background position as Center Center, and all the other options at their defaults, except the last one which I will change to Multiply. That way the semi-transparent background colour I added before will act as an overlay over the featured image. And this is why I set the colour here, and not in the sliding bar options. So now for any page that has a featured image, that image will be used in the background of this sliding bar, and for any page that doesn't, it will just be colour 8 as I originally set it. I'll just save my progress here. The pages on this pre-built site don't actually have a featured image set, so I'm just going to quickly go to one, and in the Settings tab of the Page Options, I will add the same image used in the slider at the top as the featured image. And then I just need to go to the Content tab, and turn Show First Featured Image to No, as I don't actually want that featured image to show in the page content. I'll just do that to the other pages. OK, so back to our Off Canvas. Let's just go back to the Preview tab now, and set the View Dynamic Content option to Page, and I'll just select a page here and click Preview. Now we can see our dynamic background image. Awesome, let's move on. OK, so now to our column. I'll edit that and head to the Design tab, and here I'll set 100 pixels top margin to push this down under the sticky header. I'll also add 30 pixels left and right padding. Now it's time for some content. In my column here, I'm going to add an image element. I will add an image to the element, and here I will select the Retina logo. The logo is 632 pixels. So I'll head to the Design tab and set an image max width of half its size, 316 pixels, which will make it display crisp and sharp. I'll also just set the alignment to center. OK, that's all I want there. I'll add a new 1 1 column under this one, and because of the space between on the container, this comes in at the bottom. That's OK for now, as I'll be adding a further column underneath this, which will then push this one up to the middle. So let's edit this column a bit. On the Design tab, I want some padding in this column, and I'm going to set 50 pixels top and bottom padding, and 30 pixels left and right. OK, time for the content. This time it will be a menu, so I'll add the menu element. Let's start by choosing the right menu to display. The one I want is the Music Main menu. And then I want to set it to Vertical instead of Horizontal. Because of the default colours, we can't see it, but let's head to the Main tab to make some changes. Let's start by scrolling down and changing the main menu item text color to color 1. OK, so now we can see it. Let's go back to the top to Typography. I want this menu to be relatively large, so I'm going to set the font family from the global heading set, and then set the font size to 32 pixels. I'll also adjust the main menu text align option to center, and two options down I'll add 40 pixels as the main menu item spacing. OK, that's starting to get there. Let's just come down to the bottom and finish adjusting the colors. For the main menu item text color, I will switch to the hover slash active state, and set the color to color 4, which is the site red or pink or coral or whatever you want to call it. Now this menu doesn't have any icons, but if it did, you'd also probably want to change the main menu item icon color options at the bottom here. OK, we don't have any submenus with this menu, so we can skip that and head to the mobile tab. The only change I need to make here is to set the Collapse to Mobile Breakpoint option to Never, so this menu doesn't collapse to an icon on smaller screens. OK, that's my menu section. I just want to add one more column to this sidebar, but of course you can make yours as simple or as complex as you want. I'll add a new column, and now you can see how Space Between is separating these three columns in the container. OK, the default column options are good for this one, as I want the content to go to the edge, so I will add my element. This is going to be the countdown element. I'll start by adding a date a few weeks into the future, and the time as 9am. I'll leave the time zone on default, which in this case is time zone of site. OK, for layout, let's change this to stacked. And for label position, let's set this to the bottom. I could set the display when inactive option to hide, 
but in reality I'd probably come in here and edit this sidebar once the tickets were on sale. We could also set up a fancy system that automatically changed to a new countdown once tickets were on sale, but for that check out the how to use the dynamic options in the countdown element doc. It's linked below. For this example I'll just keep this as is. Next comes the heading and subheading text. For the heading text I'm going to add tickets on sale in, and for the subheading I'll add the Avada Music Global Tour. I'll also place a dummy link URL here in the next option, and that allows me to add a link text below, which will say buy tickets here. Okay, nearly there. Let's just go and style this on the design tab. The first change I want to make is to set the counter box background color to the coral color, and then I want to adjust some font sizes. I'll set the counter font size to 14 pixels, and the counter label font size to 12 pixels. And I will also set the heading text color to color 4. One last thing I will do is go to the background tab and set color 5 with a minus 50 alpha channel adjustment. Okay, I think that's it. Let's save this work. Okay, now we have made our off canvas, we need to trigger it. This will be from the menu element in the header, but before I edit that, I need to make a new menu. I'll just head to the WordPress menus page and start by creating a new menu. I'll call it push menu and create the menu. I only need one item on this menu and I find that under the Avada special menu items. The one I want here is called off canvas toggle. Let's add that. Now I will open it and go into the Avada menu options. In the first option I need to select which off canvas I want to use for this menu item. Then I select an icon here. I think I'll use this one. And below this I will select on for the icon thumbnail only option. Ok, let's save this and save our menu. I'll just come back to the front end, and under the Edit Live menu I will control click on Global Header, which opens it in a new tab. If I mouse over the Layout section, I can see that it's a menu element in use here, which is pulling a specific flyout menu. So the first thing I want to do is change the menu to my new one. This menu is just a very simple trigger, so most of the options are not relevant here, but I might just go to the Main tab and scroll to the bottom, here I think I will just change the icon color on the hover state. So here under the main menu item icon color and on the hover state I'll set this to color 4. Ok, I think that's all we need. Let's save this. And now let's head to the front end to have a look. I'll just refresh the page. So now if I click the menu icon, our push menu sliding bar slides out and you can see the content is pushed across as well. If I go to another page, and open the sliding bar. We can see a different featured image on the background of the sliding bar. And if I go to a page that doesn't have a featured image, like a 404 page, we can see the sliding bar background is plain, without an image. Ok, that's it. Thanks for watching. I think that's a pretty cool push menu sliding bar. There are of course lots of possibilities with this builder, and you can make all sorts of sliding bars and pop-ups. So make sure you experiment with it, and let us know in the comments what sort of off canvases you have made. In other videos, I walk you through how to build flyout menus and pop-ups with the Off Canvas Builder, so make sure to check those out. I will link them below this video. Ok, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.